Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and I'm here with an in-depth guide for Steel Series Sonar. Sonar is a really powerful tool within Steel Series GG that works across loads of different microphones, headsets, and other devices. I recommend it in a number of different videos on various different microphones, so I thought it might be worth doing an in-depth guide to Sonar and how to use it in different ways. It's a really powerful tool that's free to use and has some really nice features to it. You can have multiple tracks of audio, which I'll show you in OBS later on. You can set up some pretty clever settings in the chat audio, for example. So you can have AI noise cancellation and EQ profiles for your friend's chat via Discord. So you can improve your friend's microphones, which is pretty nice. And you can also obviously improve the quality of your own microphone. Now, for this guide, I'm going to be showing you the setup with a Shaw SM7B and a Rode Streamer X but it will work with any other device. You can use a USB microphone, for example, like the HyperX Quadcast you can easily use here. So I want to talk about things like that and how to set those up and improve the quality there. And this free bit of software basically makes life a lot easier to improve the quality of your microphone with minimum fuss because there's just a few buttons to press and it just works seamlessly and wonderfully. So we're going to get into that now and talk about the various different things to do. So Sonar is buried in the SteelSeries GG software, which has multiple different uses, but you basically click on Sonar here. And then the first thing I'd recommend as your initial setting is to turn on streamer mode. Turning on streamer mode then opens up various different things here that you can see. You have two different audio levels for each of these. So the one with the little icon here that looks like a dot and then multiple lines in the middle, that is the streamer mode. And then the other one is what you hear in your headphones. So this is essentially what goes to stream mix and what goes to your headphones. This means that you can customize the level of audio for each of these things on the fly or set them up in the way you want. So, for example, if you want to listen to music, but you don't want it to go through to Twitch or YouTube because you don't want to get copyright strike, you can just put this all the way down or you can mute it entirely. And then you can have music in your headphones that you can hear, but your audience won't hear it. So that's one option and it makes life a lot easier for that sort of thing. So, as I said, we have this setup here. I'm using the Rode Streamer X and the Shure SM7B along with the SteelSeries Nova Pro Wireless. You can use a variety of different microphones and headphones really easily. And the initial setup, once you start using this, will probably talk you through the settings for that and how to do it. But I'm going to show you what I do and how I've got this set up to make your life a little bit easier. So during the setup process, you'll be talked through various different things in here for customizing the audio. So for the master mix, what you want to do is click on cog and then you'll see you have three different options. We have personal mix, which is where you want the audio to go out from. You can either choose speakers, streamer X main, and that will come through the 3.5 millimeter connection, or you can go headphones, Arctis Nova Pro Wireless, I go between these, I haven't decided which one's best yet, but basically they're doing the same thing because obviously we've plugged in the 3.5 millimeter connection. So choose your headphones. The Streamer X makes the most logical choice if you've got the 3.5 millimeter headset plugged into the Streamer X for mic monitoring. That's your personal mix, that's the audio that you're going to hear. Then you have the Stream Mix, which we want to set as Still Serious Sonar Stream Mix. So that's a stream mix there. That's basically everything mixed into one. So that'll be your game audio, your chat audio, your microphone and other things mixed into one source that you'd use in OBS and elsewhere for your stream mix that you'd send to Twitch and everything else. And then you have your mic input, which in this case is obviously the Streamer X main. Alternatively, for a different setup, if you're using a USB microphone, as I am here with the Quadcast S, you can see you've got bad dynamic headphones plugged in to the microphone. Just to give you an idea of the setup, you might be using something similar. So any sort of USB microphone where you plug your headphones into the mic, you can do it this way. Alternatively, you can also plug your headphones in separately into your PC and you can do the settings in there. So what we'll do is we'll go into the master settings and here instead I've got it set to the speaker settings. I'll set to HyperX Quadcast S through the 3.5 millimeter connection. The stream mix is still the same, still series Sonar stream mix, but the microphone input is now HyperX Quadcast S obviously. So you can set that as your microphone and then adjust the settings under the mic tab. 
The other thing is if you're using a USB microphone or one that hasn't got an interface where you're already customizing the settings, this is an important note. For example, the Streamer X includes hardware level customization and noise cancellation and things like that built in with EQ profiles into it for an XLR microphone. But if you're plugging directly into your PC with a USB microphone, you can use the mic settings tab up here. We go into the mic settings here and you'll see there are a number of different things that you can do to apply to your microphone to improve the quality of it. There's a preset tab at the top here, so you can click on that and then you can choose between a variety of different things. You'll see obviously we've got SteelSeries Alias Microphone as one of the options, but you might want to go for a broadcast quality sound, for example. You can change into a low pitch clarity, walkie talkie, deep voice, it's worth playing around with some of these settings to see which one gives you the best quality for your voice in particular. You'll notice when you do that, it turns on an EQ profile here and it's got the settings in there. Obviously, you could customize all of that. The other thing for the mic is it automatically puts on Clearcast AI noise cancellation. So this is really good if you want to eliminate a lot of the background noise from your microphone. So if you have the sound of birds outside, as I do, for example, cars passing by, wind, air conditioner noise, noise from your PC, noise from your keyboard, for example, using Clearcast AI noise cancellation can actually help with a lot of that background noise elimination. And obviously you can turn it up so you can put it on maximum. Now you'll notice there are also other options here. So you can have noise reduction, here and a compressor and a noise gate so turn off ai noise cancellation to turn these on now these are more granular and you'll have to adjust these and play around with them it's really going to depend on your environment what impact these have and whether they're for you so you've got a noise gate for example you can set this to automatically compute and work out the levels for you and you'll play around with those couple of settings there in order to work it out. You'll probably find that Clearcast AI noise cancellation is the easier one to do. So just turn that on and then you'll get a better sound without having to mess around. Compressor is different because it adjusts the levels basically from the top end to the bottom end. So if you're really loud sometimes and really quiet other times, it will just normalize the levels a bit better and make the sound a lot nicer. I'd recommend playing around with these settings I haven't got any specific recommendations because obviously I'm not talking about specific microphones. You want to bear in mind the fact your microphone might be different to mine or the one I'm using. Also, your environment, whether the room's sound treated, noisy or whatever else. Well, that's how you'd set that up there. But if you're using an XLR microphone, then you'd want to turn it off because in this instance, for example, with the Streamer X, I don't want to apply extra processing when it already has it at the top level in the Streamer X main, so in the XLR interface. If you do that, then you're applying processing twice and then that can lead to problems. So as well as having the ability to adjust the audio for your microphone, as you can see, we also have these options for the other things. So the one I mentioned, for example, is chat. You'll see you have a chat saying, so this allows you to customize the audio that you're getting through the chat channel, the virtual channel there, to improve the sound. You'll notice I've actually got mine turned on. So you can see we have broadcast setting here. We have an equalizer turned on, same as it would be for your microphone. You have noise reduction and compressor settings in here. So essentially what we're doing here is we're applying those same settings that we did for our microphones, but to your friend's microphone. So if you're in Discord with one or more friends, and let's say they've got a really poor quality microphone or they have a lot of background noise. So they've got keyboard sound, they've got wind noise from fans or other things. You can improve the quality of their voices so that your recordings sound better. So your gameplay kips or your streaming content just sounds better and your friends aren't spoiling it with their rubbish microphones. I have found, however, that this can cause problems. So you do need to tweak around with it because it can vary depending on who's talking. You might find some friends, for example, have really good quality microphones and others have terrible. And obviously this is applying to the whole of everybody that's in that chat channel. So it can cause problems and you might find that some people are too quiet because the AI noise cancellation is deleting a lot of their audio. So you, this is why I've got the compressor turned on, for example, to level everybody out. So you'll need to play around with these settings a bit, but it is handy because you do have a preset so you can improve the clarity of them and just change those. And obviously also you can play around with the AI noise cancellation option. The other thing that's neat about Sonar 
is that you also have presets. So you've got a standard flat preset in here, but if you go into this, you can actually choose from a variety of different games. So you can see we've got all sorts of games. There's loads in here and you can search for them. There's 147 as standard, but you can see we've got Call of Duty. We also have Escape from Tarkov, for example, in here. So if you apply that, it's the same sort of logic. It puts an EQ profile on here, which adjusts for various different things. Essentially, this is giving you a better experience so you can pick up the sound of footsteps, enemies reloading their guns, at proximity and things like that. You'll have spatial audio in here as well, which you can tune so you can change the performance and distance of it. You've got a smart volume, which keeps the volume in a range so it doesn't get too loud. So if you find that things are too loud, for example, or you can boost it up a bit and you can just basically select your favorite game. Each time you launch it, go into here, set your favorite game and then run that. Play Unknown Battlegrounds is another one, for example. You can put that on. You can see it's got a completely different EQ profile. Spatial audio is turned off as default on this one. So these things are worth trying in your favorite game to then improve the sound there. And obviously it'll work with loads of different games. And if you can't find yours in the list, you could just choose from a flat one, for example. Or you could look for FPS. So there's an FPS option here. So if you're playing FPS games, but you don't have that game specifically listed, you can set FPS footsteps so you can potentially hear the audio of enemies quite easily there. You obviously also comply these to other things. So the auxiliary and media, you might find, for example, that you want Spotify in there. You, you might want to apply EQs to that. And maybe auxiliary, which is an alternative input, you can do that in there as well. Now, with that combination, what you then end up with is a few different audio sources. Still, Zero Sonar is pretty intelligent at working out where things go. So if you launch a game, it'll automatically end up in this game section. If you launch Discord and then I go into a channel, you'll see it appears in the chat section here automatically. But you may want to go into your user settings, voice and video, and then select the chat settings from in here. So we would use the SteelSeries Sonar microphone as our input. And then you'd have SteelSeries Sonar chat as the output. And that would be the sound that you hear through there. But obviously Discord's there in the chat section anyway. And you can then also use the sliders here to adjust the volume. So if your friends are being too loud, you can turn them down if you don't want the stream to hear as much of them. Or turn them down for you. Whichever way around you want it to, you can tweak that. Your game will automatically appear in game sections and other things. If you right click on your Windows speaker icon and go to Windows sound settings, you'll want to make sure that your sound settings are set up like this. So output is still serious sonar gaming. That's what you're going to be hearing, all the audio in there. And then the input is still serious sonar microphone because we've told still serious sonar to use the Streamer X as the microphone. So don't select that as your mic. Instead, you want still serious sonar selected. So gaming and sonar. There's a lot of different options in here, but that's because they're used for the virtual different soundscapes. Now we're in OBS, I want to show you what you can do with this because this is why it's more powerful to use it this way and superior in my mind. Click on your settings, go into your audio settings, and then you have various different audio profiles in here. Now, as a minimum, what you'd want to do is set up your microphone as still series sonar stream. So just choose that as the basic one if that's all you want to do. If you want everything down mixed into the stream output, then set that up there and then just disable the rest of them. But if you want multiple audio tracks for use in recordings or for other things, then this is how I set mine up and one recommendation for it. So what I'm doing is first of all, your desktop audio is set to still series sonar gaming. That will give you the game sound specifically. So just the audio from the game and nothing else. Then we have desktop audio 2, which is still series sonar chat. So that's the audio just from Discord and nothing else or whatever other chat tool you're using. So you can use that in game. If you have an option for VoIP in game, for example, select still series sonar chat as your output, and then that will be there. And then you have your mic, which is the stream stream as I said already. And then I have also selected microphone streamer X main for just my mic. You don't necessarily need to do that, but it gives you options because you could also choose other things from the list. So you can see there are other things and there are other things in each of them. So maybe you might want to choose 
auxiliary or media. So you might want music in there as a separate track, for example. Then if you go to your output section, what you want to do is scroll down here in your recording bit and tick to have how many tracks you want to use. So based on how many we just put in the audio section, I've put four here as my audio tracks that are ticked. Now down in the audio mixer, right click and click advanced audio properties. And then you should find this window pops up with your various different things in here. So you can see I've actually named them individually so I know what they are. You can do that quite simply. So as standard, they'll all be ticked. What you want to do is untick them all. You need to work out which one is which. So the stream mix you want as one, because that's obviously everything mixed into one. Then what you want is your game audio is in track two. So that would just be game audio. Chat audio in track three. And then whatever else you want. So I'm going for my microphone, for example, in track four. And you can pick all that. And then you should have a nice clean setup where just for the stream, so for Twitch, for example, you've got everything from your sonar stream mix mixed in there. And then you have separate audio recordings for the virtual channels for everything else. So for Discord and other things there. When you go into DaVinci Resolve, for example, and we grab a gameplay clip or whatever you want, you'll see that you then have multiple audio tracks in here. So we've got game audio, we've got mic audio, we've got chat audio, and it's all just in multiple tracks. And you can select which ones you want to use. You can reduce the levels of one, bring up the levels of another. So if you just wanted to hear your voice or you just want to hear game audio, you can do that and you can do it really easily. And this is a much more streamlined system. A couple of other things is one, make sure that sonars are allowed to run as standard. So you want to make sure that the Still Series GG runs when the computer starts. So in the settings, make sure this box is ticked because you'll need that for sonar. If you have any issues with sonar or it's not working for some reason, you can go in here and activate and deactivate it. There are also settings further down here which will allow you to set an automatic backup device. So if you have a couple of different things that you like to use and you want to switch between them, you can actually set a list for the specific things here and you can set it. So let's say, for example, you use a different headset or the, the switch between microphones. You can set it so it changes between those automatically. And you can also get into shortcuts as well if you want to do that. I generally don't mess with that stuff too much because I stick to the main devices. Hopefully you found that a useful insight into Sonar. You can see it's pretty powerful. There's a lot you can do with it. So it's a very handy bit of software you can use with a variety of different devices really easily to make your audio sound better, which is obviously important. It's free, and I'd recommend testing it out and playing around with those settings. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.